on screen, I've got an inverted cover border radius generator, and I'm going to show you how to apply this to your images. One of the things that can make a difference to your hero banner or parts of your websites is when you have inverted cover border radiuses on your images. It looks like a blob or it looks like where the curve is actually going inwards rather than our standard outward curves. Now there are ways you can do this. People tend to rely on code pens or they use pseudo elements and I did a tutorial a while ago where I showed you how you could use child containers and a bit of CSS. And I really wanted to simplify it. And that's why I'm giving you this generator that's going to generate the code for you. And you don't have to worry about child containers. Seriously, this is so simple and easy to use. What you need to do is add in a code snippet. And the link for this code is in the video description. Make sure you install the code snippets plugin that you can get for free from the WordPress repository. Go and click add new snippet, give it a title. This is called the mask curver. You just go and paste it in, hit save changes, and then click activate. And then when you go down to your WordPress sidebar and you go to settings, you will now see mask curver. Go and click it and it brings you over here. Now I'm gonna go through this step by step, but it is really intuitive and easy to understand. Now over here, we have a preview. This is based currently on 1920 by 1080. And I know you're gonna say, but it does not look like 1920 by 1080. That's because it's scaling it down. And the idea is, is that if you want to create an image mask for a big image, you could just use the width and heights here. You can modify them as well. Or maybe you want it to be very specific for an image. Let me show you. I've got an image on page. And if I click onto this and go to style, this is a 540 wide by 360 in height image. And I want to apply a particular image mask to this image. So inside of the mask curve, I'm going to go over here and change the width to be 540. And I'm going to go over to the height and I'm going to make that be 360. Now, did you notice how it went really big at one point? And that's because until I changed it to 360, it had 1080. What this means is that you can modify the values there. So if you want to have a landscape, a portrait, a square image, a very thin portrait, you can do that. And if your image is really, really big, don't worry. You just stick the values in and you get a scaled version in the preview. And then you can tinker with the settings over here for your corners and then apply that. Now I'm going to come back onto some of the other buttons, but let's just play with this 540 by 360 preview. I'm going to go to my top right. And when you reset, everything goes to none, by the way. You do have all curved or all inverted as well. If you want to apply just a quick example of what happens, but let's just reset and start with none. I'm going to go to my top right and I'm going to make it be a curve and I'm going to increase it. And you can go quite wide on this. You can go up to a thousand. If I go to the bottom right and make that be curved, I can do the same. But I'm going to show you what happens if you do a thousand. It'll bleed over. Now, there are limitations I could have set here, like min and max values. But I just wanted to leave it open for your creativity. So you can do that if you want. But we're not here to focus on curve. Because doing curved border radiuses is really simple, no matter what page builder you're using. We want to do some inverted corner borders. Let's go to the top right and let's go and click inverted. You can see it over there just a little bit. Let's make it a bit bigger. And I can go quite big over here. Look, I can go as far down as that. So if I want to have a part of the image like hidden away or masked away, because I'm going to drop in an icon, a button, heading, text. By the way, we are applying this to the image, not the background of any section or child container. I tried to make the code work for that, but I found that there were some glitches and bugs with it because it seemed to eat away at more than it really needs to eat away at. So I only apply this to actual images. But let me just go and shrink this down. What if you don't like the current curvature of that? We've got a smoothness field and I can adjust it to make it be more rounded like that, or I can make it be more like an open book. I'm just going to go with something like that for now. Now, this is how I'm going to keep this really simple, OK? I can go over and I can mix it up so I might want to have a curve on another side. Remember, though, if you over maximize your values, it kind of bleeds out and you will get a fish tail kind of shape. I mean, it will still work, but just be mindful of how much you are moving the values. So I've gone and reset everything, put back my width and height, and I'm now only going to do the top right inverted. And I've gone and changed my values a little bit. Now I get to decide how I apply this to my image and I have three options. I could hit save as SVG and that will download as an SVG to my downloads folder. 
I can hit save as PNG and it's now gone over to my PNG folder. And don't worry, it's got a transparent background, so everything is fine. And then I could go over to my image, click on it, go to the advanced tab, go down to where we have mask, click mask. And obviously you've got to pick a mask now, so I could pick circle or octagon, hexagon or whatever shape I've got there. I could go to custom mask and then I could upload my image upload my SVG and it will then apply that shape to the image. But I want to use my favorite way and that's where I'm going to go to the advanced tab and I'm going to use custom CSS. So we go back over to the mask curver because we're not going to use those two options over there. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to copy this code. Now you will notice that this code has a fair amount of comments at the top. I'll explain what they are in a moment. But let's just make sure we've copied that code. Go back to our image, click it, go to the advanced tab, custom CSS, and now watch the image when I paste this in. Can you see that? It's gone and applied or masked that part of the image. Let's get rid of the code. Let's add it back in again. You're not losing anything else on the image. It's just masked it for you. And if you're wondering if this will work on the mobile, remember this is CSS. So if you wanted to have a different value applied for the mobile or no value at all, you could use your at media query min and max. But if you do go over to the mobile, it doesn't look quite right, does it? But that's because I haven't set the size of my image for the mobile. So I've gone and modified my sizes. But can you see the SVG mask that we've generated? The code is still applying because that's the whole thing about SVGs. If whether your image is big or small, as long as in relation to the proportion of whatever you had, it maintains the size of it. And if we go back to the desktop, it's still okay. Now let's return over here because I want to explain why do I have this massive comment which repeats all of the settings or values that we've added. Let's just click reset done or let's say you've come back into this after a week or two and you realize that image mask just is not good enough now. You want to switch it to be a different side or you want to make it bigger or smaller. Maybe you've got a bigger button or more text to show. Well, here's what you do. Make sure you clicked on the image, go to where you got your CSS and copy all of that code. You go back to the mask curver and look down here, paste SVG code and you hit paste and then you hit import code. The reason you have all of that comments was it was the best way I could get it to feed back into everything we have here. So let me just show you that again, right? Reset, everything is reset. All of this, this is not the actual code right now. Everything has been reset. Look, 1920 by 1080. I hit import code 54360. Look, the values have gone back to what I had done before and I've got my shape. So now I can refine it. So if you are going to create 20 different image masks on your website because you like to have blobby shapes or stuff like that, you just need to copy the CS code, paste it in and modify it. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. And don't forget, if you're liking this, go and check out our CSS course and how to build an Elementor website and loads of our business productivity guides. Links are in the video description. Go and have a look. And I just want to show you another way of how you could make this work. OK, I've got an image over here and I've got an icon. This icon, when you click it, could take you to a post, another page a product. It could be a call to action. Just to explain how this was built, we have a parent container. We have two child containers. Child container one has heading, text editor and button on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, I've got a container inside of there. I've got an image and I had an icon. The image when we go to CSS, as you can see, has this code. Now, this is a version of the code before I went and inserted all the comments in. But you can see here, it just brings everything over and it does the image masking. And then when we go over to the icon, this has been placed as a position absolute. And then I just set it to be on the far right and at the top. And when we view that in the mobile, remember, you would go and set your width and height. You don't need to change the SVG. You only do that if you really want to be particular and you want to have a different at media, you know, max or min width. If you want to go really particular, then you would go and do that. But you can just use the same SVG code so you don't need to modify it. I think this is the most imaginative way that we've ever had before, ever, ever to go and generate our own inverted corner border radiuses. Really simple and easy. You get the options to download it as an SVG or a PNG if you want to use it elsewhere. Big image, portrait image, square image, whatever you want. I really hope you enjoy that. My name's Imran from Web Squadron. I love to create solutions. I love to problem solve. I love to challenge myself. And I really think that this is mega useful for so many people. Please stick it in the comments 
comments if you really like what I did here and if you will use it or plan to use it or maybe there's a better way maybe there's something that could have been improved in this code please do let me know in the comments like subscribe share and follow I'll see you soon